All right. Is this sideways for you guys? All right, now that's upside down. Let's go this way. Let's see if we can.
All right, ladies. It is uh, a little after 11. Um, you know, it's hard to do this setup without going live to see what it looks like. So I really wanted it to be uh, horizontal, but I can't quite right, figure that out. Um, so now I can see a little bit of the delay. I can hear myself. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get started and, um, hopefully we will, uh, see people pop on here and hopefully this format is not so, uh, terrible at the moment. I know you can see my computer and the stand that I have my, um, camera on. But it looks like I'm going to, hey Leanne, <laughs> um, it looks like we're going to have to uh, play around a little bit because I think it will be better if we do this horizontally. Um, but anyways, let's, let's go. Um, I am wondering how many of you have watercolored or not. This was definitely not the first stamping technique that I learned, but it is a great technique. Now let's get this out of the way. We're actually starting. So, so, um, coloring, you know, has been known to be therapeutic. A lot of people, you know, those adult coloring books came out several years ago and, um, you know, people love to color. Well, it's a great way to get some color onto your stamps. Um, for card making or for scrapbooking, um, bookmarks, whatever you feel like doing, um, it's a great way to add that color. And it's so simple. And it's, you know, and again, if you're talking about, um, you know, art therapy or de-stressing or something that you can take with you on the go, this is a great option to do that. Um, I'm going to just show you what you'll need. So you're going to need some watercolor pencils. Um, this is a set that uh, my mom gave me. I don't know the brand. It says, here, let me pick a darker one here. Uh, Create a Color Studio Line by Austria or Made in Austria. I don't know. Um, a nice general set. As you can see, I've used these a lot. There's, you know, some of these blues are, are quite short. So you're going to need a set of watercolor pencils. Um, and then a water brush. This my mother also gave me. I'm guessing it came from Amazon or AliExpress. Um, but this is a brush tip. It's This reservoir is filled with water. And then this has um, some brushes. And I'll show you how we blend the colors in a moment. So this is kind of like the two things that you need. Obviously, you'll need some stamped images. Uh, we're going to work on... Some ones today that when my mom was at my house last week, she sat and stamped for me. So we're going to work on those. But I want to show you my other sets of watercolor pencils so you can just see what the options are. Um, this set I picked up a couple of years ago. It is from Stampin' Up. It is, um, they did their colors. I think this is the Brights collection. Um, but you'll see these came in a tin. So I used the green quite a bit. So these are Stampin' Up! ones. You'll want a, a pencil that is designated as watercolor pencils because that means that the ink is um, very light and flaky and will react to the water. Regular pencils will have too much wax in them. They won't. And then um, this is the set we're going to use today. This is the set that is currently available through Close to My Heart um, through that catalog. Um, I got these as part of my startup so I just um, I do want to try these out um, you can see all the colors here and then these are these are also water brushes um, these came in a kids craft from Michaels it was like in a dollar or two dollar craft so you don't have to spend a lot of money to do this um, obviously I think this style is a little bit more um, stable these do leak a little bit but if you're looking for budget you can go this route otherwise something like this is very similar we also have um i think two or three different two sizes and a different style in the close to my heart catalog which you can look at too so let's pull out some of these and then i'm going to show you the stamped images that my mom when she was over earlier this week stamped a whole bunch of these for me and um so they are ready to go. So this is great. You can stamp a whole bunch of things 
um, and take them with you. You will want to use, however, um, oh, I forgot to grab it. Memento is a brand that makes a, a black ink uh, pad, or you'll want to use the intense black one from Close to My Heart because it um, they're not water-based, all right? So this is not going to run. This one here is water-based, and once you add the water to it, your image is going to run a little bit. So you definitely want to use intense black or you want to use memento which is another brand that um, you can find at michael's or joann's or, or wherever but look at these guys this is the stamp set here it's called you make me happy it is the uh, it is the charity stamp set that is on the back of the uh, close to my heart catalog um operation smile proceeds are donated to that so this is 1895 it's 25 stamps it's called you make me happy and it has all these very cute critters and some nice little accents that you can add to them these look great in a circle punch um, most of these are really are they lend themselves very well and then um, later today um when we're done here because i'm working on like three different computers right now i'm going to upload this for you and this is just kind of a general list of everything that i'm talking about now so you don't have to remember that um, so let's pull out the pencils and let's start coloring so I'm going to start with this sheet of bluebirds, um, and then I'm going to have a whole stack of samples here. I'm going to show you of things that I've already done. So let's pull out a couple of blues here. And the great thing about this is you guys do not have to be a good colorer. You know, kind of stay in the lines is basically all you got to do. You do not have to have excellent um, detail skills. Um, I'm going to show you the water is going to do all the work. So let me move these out of the way and uh, put my water brush up here again I really wish that I could have gotten the workspace to be horizontal so that's what I'll be working on this afternoon while you guys are working on other things so let's just start with this little guy and I don't know we're gonna make his wing maybe a little bit darker towards the edge here and maybe this tail feather will be a little bit darker and maybe a little darker down here on the bottom side of his breast but you know again just kind of general I'm going to grab this other lighter color blue and uh, this is Mediterranean blue and I'm just going to start working on filling in kind of the rest of him. It does not have to be perfect. The water is going to take a lot of this and and do the work for you. So let's add some there and there and let's just throw in let's throw in a, maybe a little bit of green to give this guy a little dimension maybe around his face. We'll do a little green maybe a little bit in these wingtips. Let's just throw some green in there. All right, while we're at it, let's do some green on our leaves. So I'm literally just kind of swiping in a tiny little breadth of color. And again, the more colors you add, the more blending you're gonna get. Uh, and I'm not finding, let's see, is this a dark green? Yeah, here's a dark green on these. So the more pressure you put down, the darker your color is going to be. You don't need these to be very intense. I'll show you some intense ones later for different types of things. I think anything with nature, just kind of keep it light and airy. All right. So there's this one here. Now watch this. Um, always make sure you have a little bit of a paper towel on hand. You don't want to have a lot of splatter. You can see really closely there does say push on either side of this. You're going to push on that just kind of to get the water flowing on that. And then I do try to, between switching colors, especially if you're going from very intense to lighter colors, I do try to wipe off those colors on here. So let's just start here with our um, with our leaves. If you put get some uh, water going on this, it's going to lift up some of those pigments and distribute them. So this dark one we might need to add, let's see, it's not flowing as, there we go. All right, and again, I try to do all the similar colors first just to avoid picking up any color between one part of my image and another part of my image. And any regular paper will do, not copy bond paper for your computer. I'm talking about like a nice stiff cardstock, okay? And now we're going to start working on that bird a little bit. You want to get the water flowing a little. And as you see, the lines start to blur. That's kind of where you want to be. All right. And it's 
It's not blending as easily as I would have expected it to. Might be, these are new pencils for me. All right, so you're getting a little bit of that blending in there, but not as much as I normally see. Let's try these, these nice other ones. Let's try. Oops. Again, we're gonna put down. It could also be I should put a little pad underneath this paper where I'm coloring right on hard, uh, hard surface. Sometimes you need that little bit of a cush. So we're gonna add some darkness down here on his belly. Once again, let's do that. Yeah, this is a little bit. I'm gonna put this mat. All right, as I said, I'm not a pro. All right, let's try this. It gives you a little bit more cushion to your, a little bit more softness. All right, and let's add a little bit of green to his face and a little to these tips. Go back with our our blue and fill in. All right, let's try some of these leaves. You're gonna give it a light overall fill in, and then once we go back with that water brush, it's gonna pick up and blend that for you. Add a little bit of tone here. All right. Give it that nice base, and then let's go back and add some detail. You can do it right on those stamped lines. All right, not forgetting that leaf there. All right, let's hit this with our water brush, and we'll start with the blue. There we go, this blends a little bit better. I, it either needs to be on a slightly soft mat, you can just uh, put an extra magazine underneath, but you see how it just picks that up and then makes it like a paint. All right, oops, I should have hit my thing. There's a little bit of blue there. All right. So another thing you can try, if you don't have pencils and you can't get out to the store these days to get them and we're not expecting Amazon to be delivering non-essentials anytime soon, another thing you can do is take your ink pads that you already have, all right, you're gonna take your ink pads, smush them a little bit. You're gonna get a little bit of the ink here on the lid. And you're gonna take your water brush. And again, this is very important for you to have paper toweling to kind of prohibit the transfer of colors. And you're gonna pick up color that way. Now look at this. I'm just gonna take it straight over here and carefully paint in those leaves. All right? It works just as if you were to have a water set of paints. Um, and you can, they do have a, a set of watercolor palette paints, but if you have stamp pads, use your stamp pads, use what you have. Um, you just need a water brush, okay? And so I'm gonna go through and I'm, I have green open right now. It's candy apple green, this is a close to my heart color. I'm just gonna go through and give all of these little leaves, I'm picking up the ink right off of that ink pad there. If you want a really intense color, you can go straight to the, to the stamp pad too, but um, this is plenty. And this is just gonna give you this nice filled in look. I'm gonna add a little bit of green to his face here. And maybe a little bit of green down on some of these feathers. And then I'm gonna go and get rid of this green, squeeze through some more water if you need to, to get your bristles clean. I mean, the water's running clear here. You'll still always see a little bit of color on those brush tips, but as long as it's running clean there. And then now I'm gonna grab some blue squish squish this is a stamp this is a stampin up ink pad um i'm gonna pick up a little bit of the blue color from the corners there this pad is pretty juicy there's some there's some all right and look how intense that is so you may need to run a little bit more water through it but look how pretty look how much color that gives your image all right that's just one little dollop. Look at what you can do, all right? I should have grabbed more colors here. I, I only have a couple of uh, greens and blues. Look at that, you don't even need watercolor pencils. Um, I like the watercolor pencils because what I do is I just put out a whole set of stamped images like this 
and then I will take it with me to, um, you know, a swim meet or something like that. And I will sit and I'll have stamped out a whole bunch of images and I just have to bring um, these pencils. Always do, like I threw it in here, you're going to need a sharpener. You know, don't forget a sharpener to, that you've got all of your images with you. But you can either put your pencil right onto the paper or you can use your water brush and pick up ink from uh, stamp pads that you have. So that's a really easy way to do that. All right. I'm going to show you some of the other images that I have watercolored just so you can get an idea of all the different types of things you can be coloring. Obviously some stamps lend themselves better to coloring in than other stamps, but you can always do a background. You can always do a nice little um, shade underneath something. So let's have a look at some of these. Now, when you're working on a sheet like this, again, you want to try to keep your colors from blending too much into each other. So I would go on this sheet and I would go through and I would do all of the yellows, try to do your lighter colors first. And then I went back and kind of did all my reds on all of my roosters. And then I went back and did all the blues. It was just easy and I wasn't having to always... Um, get my water brush clean to do that. And then this is on a... Um, on like a parchmenty colored paper tan. I'm gonna hold this up a little and hopefully you guys can see that a little bit better, um, that really nice watercolor image that you get from that. So let's see, I'm finally, my camera's catching up to what I'm doing. So isn't that lovely? And you can just cut these out in ovals, um, punch them out with a square if you need to and add them to some of your projects. So there's my roosters. This was another great stamp set and I actually then added, um, this was stamped in a gray. This was not stamped in black. So I'm gonna try to excuse the lag as my phone and computer sync up to each other. Um, so this was a great little cottage scene that just by adding those um, bits of color to it and then going over it with the water brush really makes it look like you painted it. So, um, all right, my computer and phone are a little bit laggy. All right, so there's a nice little option of the scene. This one will probably be harder, even harder to see on, um, on the camera here, but it's a very nice, subtle stamp of these seagulls in the sand. And again, this will be a great peekaboo card. Um, I think I have this set up to cut into fours so that we'll put an oval in that um, main flock of geese will peek through and then the little one other one is in the bottom right hand corner of the actual inside um, of the of the card so hopefully you can see that all right here's a nice bold set of images so again this is very sketchy it does not have to be neat at all and you can see I played with some various now this up here this is alcohol marker this one, these two here. The rest of these are watercolors because they were so much easier to blend. So, um, and then these I have the framelits for, so I'll be punching these out with my Big Shot, uh, rolling those through, and then it'll cut these to be used on something. Um, but again, I just, I love the different shades you get from even using almost the same color of, uh, of watercolor pencil that you get. And then this is a really fun one. This is, again, a little bit more intense. You want to press a little bit harder when you're putting the color on for the brighter colors. But once you hit it with the water, it really, it, it just looks so smooth and so neat. This one I think I put on the uh, cover of the Facebook page um, for my crafting, or is that on, my, on my YouTube channel. So this will be, this is nice and bright and summery. Um, and then these, these will have to be fussy cut. I don't have a framelit for these, but... Again, stamp them all, throw them in a case. I'll show you the case that I take um, here in a minute. And then this is what those go with as well. This is this really fun, bright um, ice cream truck that I've done several different versions of. Um, I've also done this uh, particular stamp with shimmer brushes, which looks 
dynamite. Um, it's because it has a lot more open areas. It's pretty easy to color. It's um, with a with a larger brush like that. Uh, but otherwise, I love the colored pencils because they get you into those nice details of of some of your images. And then this is probably the most um, what most intense different colors of water. Um, coloring that I've done with the pencils but as you can see you really do get um, that nice crisp area uh, to add those details to so I have several sheets of these I actually did these last summer while I was sitting at a swim meet so I definitely need to cut them apart and get them into something because there it's too much time and effort but look, I have one, let's see, I'm going to show you there. I have one sheet that's not done. So you can see what the original stamp looked like. Two, oh, these are some more of those other ones. Three sheets of these that are done. And look, this is what it started out as. So let's see if I can find. I mean, look at that. How fantastic to take this black and white image and add those colors to it. It looks, you know, I'm gonna say it looks like a real artist did it. And it was little old me who did it. So, um, so many fun things you can do with these watercolor pencils. And again, some of these stamp sets just really lend themselves to them. Here's a, more of those very um, loose flowers, uh, very sketchy flowers that work so well. And then, this last one, um, I don't know if you could tell. So this was on a shimmer paper. Yeah, no, I don't recommend it. It it takes too long to dry. It takes too long to set up. So I am going to say that the um, shimmer paper is kind of a, a no-go in terms of watercolors. I think they're probably better suited for um, better suited for maybe alcohol markers. Okay. Um, this is the case, these little cases, you can get them at Michael's, um, nice and convenient to throw in some sheets of paper. Um, and that's exactly where I pulled these out of. Look, here's another one that I have halfway done. Um, but these are nice and convenient to, uh, to take with you. So I'm going to pack these back into here until I get them going. All right, so that is going to bring us to the end of this. I am going to post this little um, this little document, which will kind of give you an overview of the different things that you might need uh, to do some watercoloring. Um, if it's not your boat, don't worry about it. Move on to something else. Um, I'm also going to post the, today's challenge. Um, I was trying to get Canva, uh, I, which is what I make some of these graphics in to, uh, to load about an hour ago and it was the website was down. It was not having a lot of fun. So I'm going to put this up there so you can kind of just see some of the products that uh, we recommend. Again, you do not want to use a water-based black ink. You want to use something that's, um, that's not going to run when you hit it with the water. So there's that. And then I've already put in a ticket challenge for um, people who had pre-registered and that you've joined us. You don't have to join us for the lives. I just wanted you to register. And then I'm going to put up another post that will tell you what our first challenge is going to be. I'm going to keep that separate from this video so that this video can stand on its own. But do look for that for me in about an hour and uh, keep going with whatever you happen to be working on today. Do try to get outside. It does look like it's going to be nice. Um, I do know that rain is coming. So if you can get outside today, please do so. Um, but do take some time to get your projects done, to take this time for yourself. Um, get, grab some friends, bring them online, and I will see you guys this afternoon at 4.30. But look for a couple of posts here throughout the day, including your first challenge which I hope you um, partake in. It's super, super easy, I promise. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.